Hi, and welcome to the first video of the STIN system. I'm Ryan STIN, and I'm going to record a few of these videos about uh, the STIN system itself and some of the exercises and some of the reasons behind what I do. Um, amazingly, the STIN system has become a little more popular than I thought it would be, and uh, so to save some questions, maybe this is uh, how I'll handle this in the future, just making a few YouTube videos. Um, I'll start by introducing myself. Uh, like I said, I'm Ryan STIN. I started powerlifting back in 2005. Um, I was training for about a year before that. Uh, the, uh, I got into the sport from a friend who decided we wanted to be a powerlifter. Um, and uh, we met up with a group of powerlifters who happened to train in our gym. Uh, Jeff Butt was the uh, leader, the coach at the time. And uh, most of what I've done in the sport has, has been really um, based on Jeff's mod model and, and training. Um, before that, I was kind of training in the uh, West Side or Metal Militia or, you know, the Multiply stuff because that was what was popular on the internet and that's what we found. Uh, most of that stuff was uh, revolved around training uh, three or four days a week. Uh, you can only do each lift one day, maybe maybe two days a week. Um, and Jeff kind of changed that for me. He uh, introduced me to the idea that you could do a five or six day a week program um, where we squatted a couple times a week, benched three times a week. And I think we just deadlifted uh, once or twice a week, depending on um, accessory work. Um, most of what Jeff did also was just pure progressive overload. So we would uh, we would start with uh, tens to sixteen reps the first few weeks of a program, then drop to eights, then to fives, then to threes, and so on as the meet got closer. Um, it's a pretty popular training model, and uh, you know it works for a lot of people, and it and it works. And I, I still incorporate a little bit into the stin system, and uh, and then over time, I experimented more with uh, the conjugate, conjugative method, which uh, is kind of basically what Westside is, uh, where you're changing your exercise every week, um, changing your rep schemes every week, and not doing that progressive overload. Um, and I, I found good success with that, and I liked the varied aspect of it and not doing the same thing every week. Uh, it really led to uh, interesting training for myself. I would write a 12 or a 14 week program and follow that through. Um, and that worked, but what I'd basically do is I would follow a 12 week program. I'd write a 12 week program for a meet, uh, follow it to that meet, and then uh, after that meet, I would throw it away and start a new one. Um, so too often I was thrown out the baby with the bathwater, as the old people would say. Um, and uh, I think that uh, led to a lot of just experimenting and not really uh, using what it worked and what was proven to me. Um, I decided that I wanted to get my raw squat back up. And I'd read a lot about um, John Bros and, and the, the methodology he followed, which is more like the Bulgarian method where you're, you're training heavy, heavy every day. Uh, and he preached that uh, you could squat to a max every day. That max may not be a true 100% of max, but it's 100% that day. So for 50 days straight, I, I squatted, uh, which was pretty crazy to me because my back injury basically happened every time I, I started squatting frequently. Um, but doing doubles and singles on, on uh, squatting every day, um, I still tweaked my back a few times during that, that 50 days, but uh, it wasn't nearly as bad. Um, and I found that squatting the very next day or two days, uh, usually very, the very next day, sorry, uh, even if it was only 120 kilos or 150 kilos, that movement actually helped my back recover quicker and uh, I began to trust my back more and more as I squat. So over the course of 50 days of squatting every day, uh, I think I took my raw squat from about 230 kilos to 270 kilos uh, beltless. So I was pretty happy with that. Um, no, uh, didn't wear a belt the entire time. Uh, figured that was the best way to, to not overload my system. Um, so I took that model, and the only reason I stopped doing the squatting every day was that uh, I was doing competition um, about eight weeks later and I didn't know how to, I was doing a quip competition I should say, and I didn't know how to uh, incorporate equipment into squatting every day. I didn't think I could recover uh, from doing knee wraps or any kind of overloading method, uh, which is the same reason why I didn't wear a belt during that 50 days. I felt even a belt allows you to overload your, your true strength, right? So by not adding equipment in, I was able to sustain that 50 days. But if I was worried if I added in a belt or knee wraps or a squat suit, that overloading would uh, would cause 
too much stress and I wouldn't be able to continue that that cycle. So I began a program at that point, uh, and this is uh, 2013 at this point. Um, I uh, This is uh, early summer 2013. I was competing at the North Americans uh, down in Orlando. And uh, so I started a system that was pretty similar to what the STIN system looks like now. I was squatting four days a week. Uh, Monday's a light squat, Tuesday's a heavier squat, uh, Friday's a light squat, Saturday's a heavier squat again. The uh, Tuesday and Saturdays where equipment was put on, uh, usually the Monday and Fridays were done with a safety squat bar to save my shoulders. Uh, I found if I t spend too much time under a straight bar, my shoulders uh, get really mad at me. Um, and uh, it worked pretty well. Uh, I, uh, my numbers kept increasing. Um, I had a good meet at North Americans, and then I started training for the Worlds in Norway that year. Um, I was pretty disappointed with my, with my Norway uh, competition. Uh, not with my squat or my bench, both of those were personal bests by small margins. My deadlift was, uh, was way down. I only deadlifted 285 kilos. Um, I jumped to 305 in my second attempt, missed it twice. Um, I had this plan to jump to the national record and, and uh, watching my 285, it was just a silly plan. That's the very next day after Norway Worlds, I, um, I started writing the stint system. And I really liked uh, the Chico block model where you get uh, four week chunks and uh, you can put them together and do them however you want or you repeat blocks and then you just toss a, a peaking block at the end to go into a competition. I think it's a fantastic model. I started building my block model based on that. Um, and I built about uh, two equipped blocks, two raw blocks and one equipped peak and one, uh, one raw peak at a time. And uh, I was doing a, a raw meet right after so I Tossed, I went right in base around the raw peak uh, for four weeks to uh, to last chance that year, and I had a good meet. Uh, I won't say the sin system did anything in four weeks. It was basically the same thing we've been following. So after uh, last chance, where I where I uh, competed raw, I, I started training my right way for north for the national championships, and uh, I was doing those equipped. My my plan was to do as much equipped lifting uh, the next year as possible. So I trained for nationals and uh, had really wanted to come in and hit a big total after hitting 915 in Norway, which was the same thing I had lifted at uh, the North Americans in 2013. Um, I don't like hitting the same total two meets in a row. It, it's frustrating. It feels uh, futile. But uh, So I had a big goal for nationals and I uh, came in and I had a good competition with Jason Burney uh, who helped push me and, uh, and we ended up both totaling 945, but he was lighter. So he actually beat me um, on body weight, and uh, so 9:45 was a was a good 30 kilo um, PB uh, since injury. It's actually the, the same as my best total before my injury back in 2009, 2008. Um, so it was nice to get back to that that level that I'd been at before I hurt myself. Then uh, I was competing about uh, 10 weeks later or 12 weeks later at uh, North Americans in July, where uh, I had another good battle with. Uh, Larry uh, or Lazario Nieves, and I uh, ended up pulling 950 uh, for the win. And then uh, right away I started training again for uh, Provincials, which was about eight weeks after North Americans, which was only seven weeks before Worlds. So these are really tight competition timelines. Usually I wouldn't train, I wouldn't do less than about 10 weeks of, of training for a meet. Um, but with the way we train now, I find it pretty easy to get back in the gym right away and and go right back into another meet schedule. So provincials, I went in with, uh, you know, not a really specific goal. Um, I had wanted to, I had originally planned only doing second attempts because I was so close to Worlds that I didn't want to um, push myself too far. But that's really hard to do at a meet. Uh, you really just want to go as hard as you can. So I ended up uh, totaling 973. So then about seven weeks later, I, I lifted at Worlds and uh, I had a, Fairly good meet. I came in with the, the real goal of hitting um, a thousand kilo total, which you know has been my goal since I started lifting almost. And unfortunately, I came up with a 985 total uh, after missing my opening squat on depth and uh, missing my second deadlift on by tearing my hand. It just wasn't in the cards, but uh, it wasn't far away. Uh, it's nice to even after 12 or another sorry seven, seven weeks to make another 12 kilos on the total. Uh, felt really good, so. Considering that that Worlds was basically one full year for
from the time I started the stint system and started running the stint system to have put 70 kilos on my total uh, is a pretty pretty good feeling. But uh, some of the, the important things that I follow in the stint system are that uh, singles and doubles uh, I think are better for more experienced lifters. Volume is not a bad thing, but uh, I like to think of we get volume through accumulated uh, workouts a week. So we'll do um, four squat days, not a ton of volume each day, but over a course of a week we're getting an accumulation of volume. Um, so I think single, doing singles and doubles because you're practicing, you're practicing good form at a heavy weight. Uh, when we did uh, the Jeff Butt model where we would uh, do a meet and then drop down to 10s or 8s or some high volume or high rep scheme, um, you lost that heavy weight feeling on your back right away and then you slowly work back up to it. So I think I lost a lot of that uh, confidence of weight on my back every time or weight in my hands or, or however you want to think about it. Um, so I think right away, um, I just competed at Worlds about three weeks ago. <coughs> Sorry, I competed at Worlds about three weeks ago. And uh, I've already had, I'm doing a raw meet next, and I've already had 265 kilos back on my back for a double. And uh, it just makes my body ready for it. And I'm never, I never find the weight too heavy on my back. And uh, I don't have to re acclimatize to it. Sorry, that was horrible. Acclimatize to it. Um, you know, the last four weeks of training when you get down to those triples and doubles. This way, I'm always used to the weight, and I can always make, make progress on it. Um, when I'm designing a, a new block, it represents a lot of new, new ideas. Um, some are good, some aren't. Uh, I, I, you know, I kind of toss a lot of things in and see what, they, see what sticks sort of thing. Um, nothing is bad, I don't think. Um, this latest block I developed for RAW, uh, includes what I'm calling a five second, five second deadlifts, which is five seconds up, five seconds down um, for four to six reps, depending on what week you're on. And it's just a ton of time under tension. Uh, I stole the idea from uh, Detmer, uh, Detmer Wolf, the Norwegian coach. Um, I watched a video of uh, Kajel Backlund doing this in training with 190 kilos. And I'm only pulling 150 kilos, and I had to lay down for a long time yesterday after doing them. So uh, I think the uh, Time under tension, it really uh, smashes your, your back and, uh, you know, it, it's a good thing I'm going to try it for this four-week block and see what it feels like. Um, so any block you pick is going to might have something unique in it, uh, but anything I feel is very valuable, I generally carry over into the newer blocks I develop. Uh, blocks are named uh, numerically 1, 2, 3, and on. They'll just continue on that format. Um, if I create any special blocks, I do have plans to create some special blocks, so maybe some shoulder saver blocks, which would be uh, less benching, more rowing for a four-week block. Those will be uh, specifically named as such. I do have a uh, equipped reload block, which uh, is basically what you'd run after a, a meet going into an equipped pipe, uh, block. If you have enough time, it's just a, a light introduction to equipment. You're only in the gear a very little bit, um, so it's a good transition block into equipped lifting. Um, I'll probably at some point make a, a volume block um, if for people who want to get some higher reps in uh, they will it'll be you know higher higher sets or more drop sets or or something like that I do I do get a lot of uh, volume uh, through drop sets instead of through um, just straight sets I think it's important to work up to that heavy weight and then do drop sets after to get that that uh, that volume the one thing you'll notice right away in, in the stint system is that there's no accessory work or very little accessory work uh, prescribed. There'll be rows because I think rows are good for everybody. But uh, beyond that, I think accessory work is really personal. <clears throat> and uh, if, you're, if you need to be honest with yourself on what your accessory work needs to be. So if you know you have a hamstring weakness or you know you have a glute weakness, then you need to choose your accessory work based on that. But uh, accessory work is too personalized to put into a program besides, like I said, rows where I think everyone should be doing it. And the last thing I think uh, is important in the program, and, and maybe it's only important because I've been injured, but uh, I spend the first five or ten minutes of my workout uh, foam, roll, foam rolling and mobilizing. Um, I do quick passes over uh, my legs, um, both quads, hamstrings, adductors, abductors and uh, lots of time on the glutes, um, 
where I think my injury is really stemmed from. Um, I'll do my erectors if I find them sore, but uh, most times I don't roll my erectors. I don't think you can get really deep into erectors with a foam roller. It's just, if you have thick erectors, it's just not going to do anything. And then I'll head over to the wall and use a lacrosse ball to get into my rotator cuffs, my pecs, um, even deeper into my glutes if I can, if I need to. Um, and then anything else that kind of flares up. So I'll start doing uh, mobility work. I'll do some squat mobility. And if anything fires up, if a hip feels tight, I'll spend more time on that one. Uh, I think it's uh, really important to listen to your body and, and be honest. If you feel something tight, then work on it. In the same sense, when you're doing one of the workouts, and if the weight prescribed is, say, 200 kilos, and you get up to uh, 180 kilos and it feels heavy as hell, then maybe you just need to stop there. Um, your 100% is, is going to change on every given day. And uh, being honest with yourself and not pushing that, that prescribed weight because it's what it says is going to be better for you in the long run. Um, in the same sense, though, if, if you finish that 180 kilo set and it felt heavy and everyone said, wow, that looked really easy, you know, maybe you should try and push a little heavier. Um, sometimes your body, your CNS tells you it's heavy, but it's not as heavy as, it, as, as your brain thinks it was. So having training partners that will be honest with you, and it's really important for your training partners to be honest with, honest with you, because you can go, wow, that felt really good, and they're like, no, that was high, and it looked like crap. And maybe that's where you have to shut it down. Or just drop the weight and do some drop sets there, and uh, get some over volume in without pushing past that, that limit. Um, the ability to run the accumulated volume that we do in the stint system is really based on recovery and uh, recovery is another thing I'll get into in another video but uh, sleeping enough, eating properly, um, these are all important important aspects of, of training if your goal is to, to be the best you can be. So I think that's gonna, where I'm going to end this one. This is uh, getting pretty long so uh, if anyone's actually watching, thanks for watching. Uh, if no one's watching, well at least I had time to talk to myself. Uh, and thanks for uh, for the interest. If you have any questions, you can always email me or leave a comment below. Um, I'll try and follow us up with some more videos in the future. If you have anything you specifically like me, specifically like me to talk about, uh, feel free to leave a comment about uh, about that. Thank you.